Good afternoon, a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Joyce O'Connor and I chair the digital group here at the Institute of International and European Affairs. And I'm delighted to welcome you to our webinar on the European Declaration of Digital Rights and Principles, a human-centric vision of digital uh, transformation. It's my great pleasure to introduce you to our distinguished speaker, Dr. Thibaut Kleiner. Thibaut, you're very welcome, and we look forward to your presentation. And thank you especially for taking time out of your very busy schedule to be with us today. Thibaut will talk to us for about 20, 25 minutes, and then I will go to your audience for questions and answers. And please join us as usual in the discussion using the Q&A function at the bottom of our screen. Please feel also free to send in your questions during Thibaut's presentation, and I'll come to, to them once his presentation has finished. Please use the, the Twitter uh, using the handle at IIEA. And a reminder that today's talk, uh, presentation as ever is, uh, and q and A are both on the record. We all are, I think, fairly clear that there are two key policies that underpin and are shaping the future of all EU member states, the digital agenda and the green agenda. And fundamental and key to the implementation of these twin policy pillars, pillars of digital and sustainability is the Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles. And that these principles and rights will promote a digital transition shaped by European values. This is a set of European rights and principles that affect EU values and promote a sustainable future, as well as outlining the rights that European citizens can expect to have. The Declaration on Human Rights and Principles reflects a shared goal of a digital transformation that puts people first. The European Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles was signed in December 2022. Today, Dr. Kleiner will outline the Declaration's underpinning vision of a human-centered, secure, and sustainable digital transformation Formation in which no one is left behind. He will explain how the declaration can help to provide a framework to shape the future of EU digital policy and Europe's digital transformation. This European Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles is shaped and outlined by six themes or chapters that aim to guide policymakers, companies, especially companies in the new tech area, as well as outline the rights of individual citizens can expect to have online. Finally, uh, Dr. Kleiner will address the, the really critical issue of putting these digital principles and rights into practice. We're really very fortunate to have Dr. Kleiner with us today. Uh, an economist by training with a PhD from the London School of Economics. He is the Director for Policy Strategy and Outreach at the Directorate General for Communication Networks, Content and Technology, commonly known by all of us as DG Connect in the European Commission. He has worked in the European Commission since 2001, including in areas such as competition policy and state aid, He's also supervised internet policies relating to internet governance, cybersecurity, cloud and data. He was head of unit in charge of network technologies such as G5 and the Internet of Things, prior to his heading up his current position in charge of strategy and coordination. Thibaut, we look forward very much to your presentation. Many thanks, uh, Joyce, for this uh, introduction. And uh, many thanks, especially for inviting me today. Uh, I think it's an in interesting topic. And I understand that also uh, President Biden is in town in Dublin. We were just discussing that. So it's, uh, uh, I think, a, a, an important moment for uh, the whole of uh, Ireland. And I think also uh, a moment where we, uh, we can join uh, also forces around our common values, uh, you know, in the EU, but also with global partners. 
so today I had prepared a, a few slides. Maybe we can uh, try to, to show them. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm happy to give you a bit of an introduction uh, on uh, where we are with this uh, European Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles. Uh, it's something that um, the Commission, uh, the three institutions actually, so the Commission, the Parliament and the Council uh, jointly signed last December. And uh, it's uh, a document that we hope uh, will be uh, guiding our activities in the digital remit for many years to come. And we think also it will be useful for business uh, around the world, not only to understand uh, where we stand in terms of the European vision on these things, but also to make sure that uh, they can anticipate the direction of travel when they develop uh, technologies. And I think that's also very important in Ireland. There are many uh, tech champions located uh, in, in, uh, in Ireland. And very often now we, we try to use also this declaration on digital rights and principles to explain uh, what uh, you know, we expect from these new policies, these new technologies. So uh, today I wanted just to take you through a little bit the key elements in this declaration, starting from uh, you know, uh, its uh, origin, its genesis, if I may say, and also taking you through the key elements uh, uh, across indeed the six uh, chapters that you, you, you described, uh, uh, Joyce, in your introduction. Um, so indeed, uh, this declaration is not coming out of the blue. Uh, we've had for uh, the last 10 years, actually, in fact, some, some calls from the European Parliament to uh, be more specific about the, uh, the ethical dimension of our policies in the digital remit, making sure that also uh, we can spell out uh, the guiding principles for our policies and our legislative proposals. There were also a number of initiatives uh, from member states uh, over the years. Uh, you know, for instance, the Tallinn Declaration was mostly focusing on e-government, the idea that we need to digitalize also the public sector. Uh, the Berlin Declaration was also very much focused on taking uh, the whole society into this digital transformation. And the Lisbon Declaration uh, also there tried to cover a, a whole range of, of ideas in terms of uh, how digital democracy can be delivered in the EU. And there were also a number of national initiatives that we noticed, like also a charter of digital rights in Spain, as well as uh, initial ideas that were put uh, in some legal format uh, in Italy, for instance. So quite a rich background from the Council and Parliament. But really, the turning point was for us, uh, in a way, with the, uh, the COVID pandemic, where I think many uh, in the EU realized uh, what we already knew, but uh, what became uh, really obvious, which is the importance of digital technologies, not only uh, for business, but for actually every aspect of our lives. I think that uh, it became very clear that uh, in a situation where uh, you know we were all uh, in more or less in lockdown suddenly people realized that already today uh, digital technologies have uh, the potential to empower uh, uh, our individuals our citizens uh, you know and that at the same time there are risks uh, in terms of exclusion from those who cannot really participate and also from the regions that maybe are not as well uh, connected uh, to uh, the internet. So I think this was really an eye opener. And for the commission, the opportunity to also take a stronger stance saying that uh, now is also the time for the EU to explain what we stand for, what is really our vision for this digital transformation and what also maybe differentiates us from the approach that uh, is followed in the United States, where maybe uh, it is left to large platforms to uh, organize uh, principles and um, rules for the digital remit, or other models like uh, in, in China, for instance, where the state is really uh, at, at the core and, and controlling uh, everything. We feel that there is a third way, a, a middle ground, so to say, and that very much uh, fulfills the, the European approach. 
So that's why we, we decided uh, in this digital compass uh, to outline our vision and also to set to ourselves some targets for 2030 so that we can really make progress uh, in that uh, context. So that's why this ID came by. There was also a public consultation uh, where it was clear that actually there was a, a demand from the citizens to have more clarity on where, what this European vision is. And we also had even the Eurobarometer survey really of uh, uh, all uh, sorts of citizens, not only in the Brussels bubble, but across the EU that showed really expectations about uh, also like cybersecurity, you know, protection of children, important elements that therefore we decided to integrate. So in the next slide, just to, to um, flash out uh, what this declaration is about, really, uh, it's, it's about basically the EU vision for the digital transformation. It's about making sure that uh, we can spell it out in simple terms beyond the, the rich legislative agenda that we've pursued the last 10 years. And it was very important for us to make it clear that it's something that is shared uh, at all levels, so really between the three European institutions, representing really uh, the, you know, the all citizens, all the uh, 27 member states, but also making sure that through this uh, declaration, we also commit to a, a series of elements, principles that we want to deliver also to our people. So the declaration really outlines this uh, digital rights and principles, and it, make, it makes it clear that uh, we promote a human-centered, a secure and sustainable digital environment where really no one is left behind. And it's really reflecting what is at the heart of uh, what the EU is about. The declaration is organized around six chapters that uh, each one of them looks at a specific area uh, of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the digital transformation. And what is important is that uh, it tries to uh, not only cover uh, the ground uh, around this, these parameters, but also to make it clear what we commit to, what exactly is the principle uh, guiding us, but also what governments around the EU uh, are meant to deliver and what citizens can expect from uh, the European Union in terms of their rights and in terms of uh, the guiding principles for our policies. So that's really, I think, the value added of this proposal is not just to spell out the vision, but it's also to be a, a, a document that will guide our efforts, but also that we can revisit regularly to check if indeed uh, it is delivered and if the commitments that we are making are really uh, uh, in line with what is happening on the ground. So with this, the six chapters, just to, uh, in a nutshell, and then I'll, I'll try to dig a bit deeper in each one of them. Uh, the starting point is really that we want to put people at the center. The idea is that uh, in Europe, the technology is there, there to serve uh, people's uh, rights and benefits. We are not the slave of the technology, so to say. So it has really to be uh, putting people at the center. <coughs> and we also want to make sure that there is responsibility from the technology providers so that uh, the values are also impacting on the way the technology is developed. And an important principle is that indeed what is illegal offline is also illegal online so that uh, you know, this is, this is very clear. And it is something we found from the Eurobarometer survey. When we asked people, we were surprised to find that many of our citizens uh, fear that, uh, in fact, they are, they are not protected. When they do something online, they don't know, in fact, that uh, they have rights. They fear that, in fact, it's a bit like the Wild West. And if something happens to you, too bad, but uh, you cannot do anything. You know, if you are a victim of uh, ransomware or, or any, anything like this. And that's something we need to change. We need to make it clear that there are rights online as well, and that these rights will be enforced in the EU. Very important that we have elements around solidarity and inclusion. This is core to uh, our model in the EU of uh, uh, welfare states. And that's something also that is important online. The third chapter is about freedom of choice. Uh, so that's really the idea that uh, uh, again, uh, the, the online environment is also about uh, freedom. It's not something where you should feel that uh, you are dehumanized and that the technology takes over. 
but on the contrary, uh, where you can fulfill your expectations in terms of freedom of speech, but also in terms of knowing what is happening with the technology. Fourth chapter is about participation. So it's really about making sure that uh, democratic processes at all levels uh, can be uh, enhanced. It's about very much also how AI, artificial intelligence, is used and how we make sure that individuals have control on their data and on how the technology impacts their life, including, for instance, uh, in the labor market. The fifth chapter was very important because this was a finding also from our consultation, this uh, idea that you know, safety and security uh, is something that we need to enhance and to make clear to people because they don't always feel uh, that uh, they are protected. This is the case in the EU. There are lots of uh, uh, laws uh, that actually are in place, but we need to publicize it. And especially we wanted to make it clear that children must be protected online. And the last chapter, uh, last but not least, is also about sustainability. You know, it's really the idea that digital is also there to support the greening uh, of uh, our economy and our society. And that in fact, also the digital technologies should become more sustainable and not contribute to a worsening of uh, the state of the, the environment. So with these six chapters, we, we, we are covering the ground, we believe, of all the areas that are relevant for the digital transformation. But we think also that it is a simple enough message that people can just read it. And we even have now produced a, a children version uh, of this declaration so that also at school, people can uh, use it uh, and also be educated about uh, you know, this digital transformation and make it something that is really integral uh, in their understanding of the digital uh, life. So now, if you agree, I wanted just to take you through a bit more details quickly so that I can also uh, answer any questions uh, you may have. So if we go uh, uh, back to, indeed, uh, the digital compass for 2030, I just wanted to flag that this declaration really is a companion with a, a broader uh, ambition that we've expressed, which is that we need to also gain leadership in terms of the technologies. And we need to make sure that uh, the EU is becoming as much as possible uh, in charge of its own destiny, in fact, of this uh, digital transformation. So what we did is that we set these targets for 2030 in four areas that we call the four cardinal points of our compass and where we believe that uh, there are symptoms of how we should you know, become as good as possible uh, to make this digital transformation a success for everyone. So the first point is that we want the skills to be there for everyone. We want all the people basically to have basic digital skills so that they can be included also uh, in the digital transformation. And we want, and this is critical for our competitiveness, to have more ICT specialists, 20 million by 2030, with more women actually working in this area. Second cardinal points, we want to improve the digital infrastructures across the EU. So really a key uh, commitment, and this is something that you will find also in the declaration, is connectivity for everyone. We want to make sure that everyone in the EU has access to broadband and high-speed internet, because this is a critical point to be involved in this digital transformation. But we also want to make sure that we are covering the ground in terms of essential elements like semiconductors, like edge cloud and data, or co quantum computing, which are really the technologies of the future. Because if we are not in the lead, we may miss out also there and not be able to deliver this uh, vision in our declaration. Uh, this will only be possible if we shape the technologies and that's something we want to do by 2030. Very important also, we want to make sure that everybody participates. We want to make sure that businesses are transformed through these digital uh, opportunities. And we want to make sure that the government as well is, <coughs> sorry, digitalized and takes really uh, opportunities from things like digital identity. We have made some proposals there, but also to deliver key public services also online to everyone in the EU. So with these targets, our expectation is that uh, we have really a good uh, objective and we are going to work together with the 27 member states to deliver these targets. And this is going to be a collective effort, you know, not 
one member states can do it alone. This is something that we want to do together. And this is what brings us back to the, the declaration that is really the companion for these uh, targets. We want to make sure that they are instrumental to really these key principles and these key uh, digital rights. So in the next slide, uh, again, going through it. So this declaration is about concrete commitments. It's also meant to be a reference framework uh, for people and uh, for guidance for policymakers, but also for businesses and public administration. For instance, you know, there is a lot about at the moment, you know, this uh, development around virtual realities. And we think that using this declaration is, is very important because business can understand what for us in the EU will be also the building blocks in terms of what we expect from things like the, the metaverse, for instance. Same thing about artificial intelligence. We are developing legislation, but we want to make sure that beyond the legislation, there are these principles that can guide uh, our future understanding and that can also in simple terms explain to citizens what they ought to express and they expect uh, from companies, but also from their governments. Very important, we also want to make sure that this is not just about the EU, but it's about actually the whole world. This declaration is based on universal human rights, and we want to make sure that we can actually promote these six pillars with our international partners and convince them that they should embrace the same ideas as we have developed in the EU and embrace also uh, our legislative approach so that they can protect uh, their citizens and make sure that it is a positive transformation, not something that will alienate uh, populations around the globe. Next slide, just to now take you through the various chapters. So indeed, the first chapter is about this idea that technology should serve and benefit all people, as I was saying a bit earlier, and that uh, EU law and uh, uh, fundamental rights must be respected online as well as offline. This is really important because we want to make sure that uh, we uh, have no ambiguity on these uh, elements that are uh, essential. The second chapter is very important because it's about really solidarity and inclusion and something where we need to invest more. You know, there are many people still in the EU that are not using these technologies. They are worried or they are uh, not educated enough. We want to make sure that everybody has uh, access to connectivity, has access to digital skills, but also we want to make sure that the technology is also about fair and just working conditions. That was an important point we discussed, notably with the European Parliament, that was adding these elements also in the negotiations of the declaration so that it's very clear that uh, technology is not there to uh, control only, but it's there actually to improve working conditions. And here uh, also uh, public services online is something that we wanted to emphasize. It echoes what I was just saying about our digital compass, but we wanted to make sure that in the Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles, it is very clear that digital public services is something for everyone in the EU. Next slide. So two more chapters to zoom in. The first one on freedom of choice is very much about how we interact with the technology. And the idea is really that the technology is there to help us. It is not there to control us or to fool us, so to say, because these days, you know, with the uh, AI, artificial intelligence is becoming so powerful that sometimes you don't even know if you are uh, talking to a robot or to a real person. And that's something we should know. Same thing, you know, if uh, AI is used uh, in the uh, uh, work environment, you know, we want to make sure that it's not impacting on recruitment decisions without this to be transparent. So we want there to make sure that the digital environment is fair, but also that this is protecting users' rights and consumers in a way that is transparent and where really uh, we know what the technology is doing. We want therefore the digital transformation to be a positive story in the EU not this dystopian uh, future that we may see in, uh, on TVs uh, in some uh, uh, series and shows. Uh, on terms of participation, this is about democracy online to a large extent. You know, we know that more and more 
the digital area has an impact on our democracy and our on our, on our debate and on the way people get news and information so we want to make sure that there is really clarity on the uh, the public debate uh, and that again democratic participation is enhanced and not that we have disinformation uh, somehow uh, you know mis uh, representing reality and creating more problems than helping uh, democracy this is something that we emphasize also in terms of media ownership for instance and we want to make sure that online platforms have also some responsibilities in that context uh, and this is really something very much we have underlined in recent proposals from the uh, um, european media freedom act to also our uh, legislation on online platforms next slide on the last two chapters, so first safety and security. So this was really something that we wanted to emphasize very much because it was the feedback we got from citizens. They are worried sometimes. <coughs> and we wanted to make sure that it's not only about personal data, it's also about safe and secure digital technologies, products and services that we want to have in the EU with especially uh, the idea that children and young people who are more vulnerable should benefit from specific uh, protection uh, online. So that's a commitment that we are making in the EU. And we want to make sure that people feel that uh, you know, they can count not only on our legislative framework, but also on new solutions uh, for safety and security. And uh, you will see that next week, actually, the Commission is going to do uh, another uh, proposal to enhance our cybersecurity uh, in the 27 member states. The last chapter on, on sustainability is something that we wanted really to also include in our declaration, just to make sure that uh, uh, the negative possible impact uh, of also this digital transformation are properly accounted for, and that we can also make sure that um, it's a positive story at the end of the day. We know that uh, digital technologies can really improve the situation. They can limit the use of natural resources, the use of electricity in buildings and across the board. There are essential elements for renewable technologies to be implemented, but we also want to make sure that they do not impact negatively on the environment. So just to conclude with the, the final slide, I wanted really to emphasize that this uh, declaration on digital rights and principles is something that is not as such new in terms of creating new rights, these rights exist already. They are the same offline and online. But they will have really a, a, an important uh, result, we believe, because they can be a reference point over the years, informing how we develop new policies in the EU, but also making it clear to our citizens, to our businesses, what we stand for. And we will monitor, actually, the results. We will have every year this uh, report, the State of the Digital Decade report, where we look at uh, the, the targets for 2030 that was uh, uh, referring to a bit earlier, but there will be also there attention to these principles. And we will be vigilant if we see that, in fact, uh, they are not delivered, because this will be a trigger for us to do more and to do better. We will also follow uh, the reactions of our citizens. So every year we want to have a special Eurobarometer, asking citizens about their views on their rights online. And we want to make sure that we have also European projects and partnerships that look at these uh, digital rights in effect, and that can monitor if our legislation that is underpinning at the end of the day, the implementation of these principles in, 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 the, in, the, in the real life, if they are delivering what we wanted. So it is much more than a declaration, basically, that's my message. It's something which has teeth because it is inbuilt uh, with legislation and the EU will follow uh, the implementation properly. Final element I wanted to mention is that it is not only about the EU, it's also about promoting this vision, this human-centric vision of the digital transformation across the globe. And we see that it is already uh, taking ground, you know, we have had this declaration on the future of the internet that is largely based on our declaration. And we also see that uh, there is a potential now with the work of the United Nations on the Global Digital Compact 
to also embrace these principles. So I will stop there just to emphasize that uh, indeed we have uh, strong hopes that this declaration will be known by people, including by uh, children, as I was saying, with our child-friendly version, and that we will be able also to make it a reference point for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you.